Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to. What, what, what is the commonest mistake that you have noticed with most accountants? Well, the commonest mistake is um, not being. Let me give you an example. You give your clients advice. Your client fails to follow their advice, and you stay in there. When the problem area is ugly, the accountant will be the first to be blamed. You have an organization. You are not remitting your VAT returns as and when due, and you are the head of accounts. When the federal revenue brings penalty and interest, it becomes your problem. It becomes your problem because you have to solve it. You have to be able to match. You have to be able to identify all the issues you have and solve it. So your ability to also stand firm, to be assertive, and tell your your interest to fulfill statutory obligations. I'm just using that as an example. You yeah, may do a, you, you may do a plan. You may do a plan for a business, a new business opportunity. And along the line, the plan is being rubbished or pushed aside to secure some quick wins, which may later boomerang. How far are you as an accountant in telling your business, telling your employer, this is where we are headed? You can go. So most accountants do not get as assertive as they should be and it gets in the way of work eventually that accountant will still be sacrificed because it will look like he doesn't know his onions so it is better to be assertive it is better to identify your issues face them than beating about the bush and allowing the problem to rear its head and you still get blamed for it okay so assertiveness why is every or why are most accountants working towards becoming chartered? What 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 uh, advantage does being a chartered accountant confers on uh, an accountant? Now, you need to give value. That's why chartered accountant does not give value. What gives value is the stuff that you have up here. And if you must develop yourself professionally, you won't stop at having a BSc accounting degree. You want to add value to some other people's businesses. The value you will add as a holder of HND accounting or BSc accounting is enhanced by going for further training, by acquiring professional certificates. It is not the certification that adds value to you. It is the certification that adds value to what you have to deliver to the company that you work for. So if you choose not to become a chartered accountant and you want to be stagnant on your BSc accounting, all well and good. But what are you doing to improve yourself and ensure that you are relevant in the scheme of things? To ensure that you know the current ways of doing things, you know how to advise in a manner that your the person you are advising gets value. It is the same way a medical doctor must go for specialist courses to be able to, if you have uh, 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 a, a problem that can be solved by a, a general surgeon. If, as a medical doctor, you have not trained to become a surgeon, a general surgeon, would you put a patient before a GP to operate on no, nobody does that. So, becoming a chartered accountant is with a view to expanding the, 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 the scope of your knowledge, the scope of your uh, dexterity, the scope of your professionalism, so that whoever engages you would derive value from you. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Why should most students? You know, look at uh, studying uh, accounting or accountancy. 
Well, it's a living subject. Accountancy enables you to be on top of your situation. Everything ends up in Naira Kobo. Accountants, there are finance professionals. There are accountants who will put together the figures. And your ability to put together the figures affects the interpretation of the figures. If figures are badly put together, the interpretation you give to those figures are also not going to be spot on. If you classify all your expenditure wrongly and you are looking to advise anyone, because you have messed up how you classified your expenditure or you have not adequately captured all your income, whatever advice is given will not be spot on. So at the crux of every business problem is ability to ensure that your income are, or your your financial information are completely correctly and accurately captured so if you have a flair for that chances are that there will always be opportunity for you in the marketplace okay. so it's an option to choose for because it is very difficult to discard someone that, that will keep your records and ensure that those records are completely correctly and accurately captured. Any yes. advice given that is not based on that is a fluke. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So what, what, what do you like most about being an accountant? What I like most about being an accountant is the fact that I help you, I sit down, I listen to your business case. I help people to disaggregate what their issues could be and i prefer solutions and those solutions work and i am a living and i smile to the bank that's okay and then and then it brings goodwill it brings i mean i imagine that i'm giving advice and the advice is not work how will this goodwill come and then you are moving from strength to strength you are respected in the industry you are, respect, you are respected by your clients, you are fulfilled. You may not be rich, you may not be rich, but you are fulfilled. And once you are fulfilled, you do more. You increase your sphere of influence. And again, once you are relevant, you always get by. You will smile to the bank and you are happy. Anything that makes you smile to the bank, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Interesting. So what don't you like about being an accountant? Ah, when the people you work for are sleeping, you are awake. If I'm going to be consulting for you, when you have told me your issues, I must go to town and find and prefer solutions to you. Even at the risk of not sleeping when you are sleeping. You, you cannot listen to a client and walk away and not find solutions. And it, sometimes it comes at a very great cost. You may not, there are clients that we have worked for that in five years we were not able to recover the cost of servicing those businesses. But you know what? We developed, we built goodwill, immense goodwill that translated to referrals. And eventually we started recovering our cost. So the greatest issue for me is. You must have a work-life balance that enables you to stay alive while you are helping others look for solutions to their problems. And if not, you get consumed. And that's why the retirement age recommended for most accountants is 60. But people are shifting the goalpost. You still find 70, 75 year old people coming to meetings. And I hope I won't end up like that. Interesting. Interesting. What, what is the greatest thing you know that being an accountant has done for you? It has brought fulfillment. I'm happy that I chose this profession. I'm happy at what opportunities this profession has brought my way. I'm satisfied with how I have been able to. to run a company successfully for 28 years i'm happy with the goodwill that has accrued to the firm that i work for 
I'm happy that I'm able to mentor a younger generation of people that will take over. I mean, I'm happy there's a succession plan in place. I'm happy about all these things because they bring fulfillment to me. And there's money in my bank accounts. I'm happy. One of the funniest things that I have to say about accountants is that they're very, very stingy. Is it true? So let's round off on that note. As you are my stingy to you. I'm asking, I don't know, I'm asking you to respond. <laughs> and I'm using you. I'm using you. Interview me, you ask me. I'm the one doing the interview now. I'm the interview. Now, I would like to know what their definition. I would like to know what their definition of being stingy is. If you come with um, a request and you have not laid out why I need to assist you meet the request, and you get a no, and you go around saying that that man is an accountant is stingy. Well, I don't know about that. I want to say that people help people, people assist people, but you must come with a compelling reason. You must come with a compelling reason. I'll give you an example. About 15 years ago, a friend of mine approached me that he, he was going to have the 10th birthday of his son and uh, he's, he's made me chairman of the day for his son's 10th birthday and I'll be responsible for bouncing castle and a host of other things. So I asked him, what is the cost? He gave me the cost. I said, what class is this your son? He told me. And I told him, I'll, I'll rather pay for his lesson, lesson teacher's fees than pay for bouncing cars. He said, in so that's not what we are talking now. This party must hold. And because you are the chairman, I've penciled your name down to provide bouncing I said, I can't be. Did I even celebrate my own children's 10th birthday? That you are asking me to come and fund what I don't believe in. I can't fund what I don't believe in. If I didn't like, incidentally, I just buried my, my dad and my mom one year apart. So he said, I saw the way you buried your dad and your mom. You can't claim that you don't have money. Can you imagine? So because I gave my dad and my mom the fitting burial, I must now find fund uh, your birthday castle for your 10 year old when you are supposed to be thinking about his education. But you see, we have our priorities. I can't blame him for setting that as his priority. But do I want to get involved in that kind of priority? Is that something I want to do? So that guy can go around saying I'm stingy. He will have his reasons for saying I'm stingy. And there are cases where somebody brings his issues, you look at it, is is worth identifying with. You assist. So Anybody that says accountants are stingy, please, when you are going to meet an accountant for help, please get your act around you. Get your act around you. Don't go there and say, I think, I think, I think. If you are still thinking, go and finish your thinking. When you are finished thinking, come back to me and let's talk. Nobody picks money on the street. We all work for this money. And if you must, if, a, if an accountant must put money into anything, it will evaluate the pros and cons. It will evaluate cost benefit. What this guy wants to do, how does it benefit him? People come to ask for assistance for, for what will not even benefit them. So I, I will say to you that accountants are not stingy. They know their onions. They are not stingy. They know their onions and they will support whatever they think will, will prosper a worthy cause. We are both one. We are both worthy knights, so we should, we should, we should follow everything. Of course, a worthy, a worthy, a worthy cause.